For those of you that are able, I invite you to please stand as we sing our first song this morning, number 2069. We'll sing it through twice. All hail King Jesus. standing for the call to worship. The Magi came from distant places following a star. We come to worship, and, and the star sheds light on our lives. The Magi brought gifts to offer the child. We too bring gifts, ourselves, our hopes, our dreams. Shepherds and Magi, the poor and the powerful, all were welcome in Bethlehem. We too have come to Bethlehem, expecting to be welcomed and to praise the Savior. Please join me in the unison prayer. God of all time, we praise and adore you for breaking into the darkness of this world with the glorious light of your presence, a light which made your love for the world visible in the babe born in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, a light which guided those gifts bearing travelers from afar to find and worship with the Christ child. The light is Jesus you, now revealed in Jesus Christ. We pray that you will accept our worship, for it arises from hearts and minds all over the enormity of your gift to us a pure love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the second chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, Report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east 
went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Amen. Today we're celebrating the Feast of Epiphany in the church. Now the day of Epiphany is actually January 6th, which was Friday. But today we read the story from Matthew that I think many of us at least know a little bit about, especially if we've been in the church. Even if you haven't heard the story directly from the Bible, it's out there. There are images of Christmas and Epiphany everywhere. The wise men are on Christmas cards. There's 23.3 million, you know I love to Google this stuff, 23.3 million different Christmas card images with the wise men. That's a lot. Even if you're not someone who was raised in the church, you might know the story about the wise men. It's an interesting story, and it's held our imagination just as much as the manger and the cross. Now, artists have depicted it in famous paintings. Poets and songwriters have immortalized it. Even James Taylor has a song about the wise men called Home by Another Way. 
Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who was a poet in the 1800s, is the one who is credited with, with giving the wise men their names. Melchior, Gaspar, and Balthazar. No, those aren't their, their historical names. They're, we don't have a newspaper account of the visit. These are just names that were assigned to them. And we really have made a lot of a story that we know so little about. There were, they were not kings, of course, and there were not three of them, at least according to Matthew. Magi is plural, but it doesn't give us the exact number. Um, and magi, translated, doesn't mean king. It's actually a Persian term for a certain social class. So we don't know who they were. We don't know exactly where they came from. And we don't know how long it took them to get to Bethlehem to Mary and Joseph's house. Now, it's not that the facts don't matter. It's just that they don't matter as much as the story does. And the story can be true whether it happened in the manner that we imagine or not. And I absolutely love this passage from Matthew. Barbara Brown Taylor writes a book. She retells the story of the Magi in such an amazing way that I thought about just reading it to you today, but I won't. But here's the beginning of the story. Once upon a time, there were three, yes, three, very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each one of them. It was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their own imaginations. But they were so wise that they knew that it didn't matter very much. The point was that something beyond them was calling to them. And it was a tug that they had been waiting for all their lives. They had been searching for something, for God without knowing it. And now they were called to journey to the place where the star led them. Now it's this idea that if we're living our lives, minding our own business, and something gets lodged in our imaginations. Which, by the way, side note, an imagination is not a bad thing. Somehow we have negated the term in society with phrases like, it's all in your imagination, or you must have just imagined it. But our imagination is a gift from God, and when God calls to you, it can be through your imagination. It's this idea, this depiction of something more, something that can give you a peace that you cannot get any other way. Now, I refrain from saying that it can lead you to better anything, because... What if it's not better? What if the journey to find God is hard? We don't know what the journey was like for the Magi. We know that they were called and that they responded. And obviously they were a select group. Because I don't think all that many of them could fit into that tiny house. But maybe God called a whole bunch of people and only the Magi responded. So we, the three went, and at first they went to the palace of Herod, because if you're called to find a king, where else would you go, right? The palace. They knew as soon as they met him that that was not it. Further along in her story that I was talking about earlier, I love her depiction of Herod. She said, as soon as the three arrived at King Herod's palace, they knew it wasn't him because he was old, fat, and he had breath, bad breath. Now, I just found that detail kind of funny. So they left the palace because they knew Herod wasn't it, and they kept going. Now, they could have turned around at that point and gone back to their own countries and their own lives, back to life as normal, but they didn't. Micah 5 says this, As for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be a ruler in Israel on my behalf will come out from you. So they knew that they needed to head to Bethlehem. So off they went until they were arrived at the place where the start stopped over the modest little home of Mary and Joseph and Jesus. They go in, they kneel down, they worship, and they give their gifts. Now at some point, I have to think that they might have thought they were looking for an adult king, because I'm not sure that gold, frankincense, and myrrh are things that a child would use. However, they give their gifts anyway. And we don't know how long they stayed, but suddenly it was time for them to go home. And they had found what they were seeking. 
what would sustain them for the rest of their lives. And then, Matthew writes, because they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they went home by another way. Each of them had that same dream right before they were to leave, God warning them not to go back. And they obey. They were wise. And they took the road less traveled. So I pulled this book off the shelf. It was actually in the library back there. And I reread parts of it. How many of you have heard of The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck? Anybody here? Anybody? Oh, you can admit it. It's not a bad book. It was a big deal way back in the 80s and the 90s. I think it was actually published in 1978. Now, Scott Peck was a psychiatrist. I didn't think it was that old, but it really is an old book. Scott Peck was a psychiatrist, and in this book, he deals with the attributes that make for a fulfilled human life, based largely on his experiences as a psychiatrist. Now, as with anything from... I'm, I'm going in and out. As with anything from 50 years ago, now we've advanced a little bit, but this book still holds some good nuggets of wisdom. It was written from a non-religious pers per perspective, I can say that word, and it hit the mainstream, but it was talking about something bigger, something outside ourselves, something outside our consciousness. And it actually is one of the first books that spoke of love as an action as well, which was pretty radical at the time. The idea that in the book is that setting out on a spiritual journey to grow in knowing ourselves at a deeper level is something that we choose to take. But it is also the road that is not chosen by many people. Now, in the book, there is an entire section devoted to growth and religion. I found a nugget in it, Peck writes, to develop a religion or a worldview that is realistic, that is conforms to the reality of the cosmos and our role in it as best as we know that reality, we must constantly revise and extend our un understanding to include new knowledge of the larger world. The wise men extended their understanding to include new knowledge of the larger world. They could have just simply ignored the star, they could have ignored the dreams. They could have ignored the nudging from something outside their own consciousness and gone on with their lives, but they didn't. You could have hit snooze this morning. You could have chosen to simply not come to church today, but you didn't. Now, I want to be clear that coming to a building is not the point, okay? The building isn't what we worship. Like the wise men choosing the, choosing the palace first, that wasn't where they could find God. Sometimes we confuse God and spirituality and faith with a church building. But that's not what this is. This is a community of faith. And following Jesus is a movement, not a place. It's willing to take the road less traveled, to seek out ways to experience God together. And my prayer for you and for us together is that we say yes to the journey. May it be so. Amen. A side note, I'm going to follow up with this, is for the remainder of January, which is three more weeks, we are going to explore the journey and the road metaphor and how this connects to a conference initiative that our church was chosen for way back in July. Okay? We were chosen... And I know I mentioned this before, but I want to bring it up again. We were chosen to be one of seven churches in the Wisconsin Conference to be a part of, it has this really long name that doesn't mean anything, Missional, Conference, Missional Church Consultation Initiative, or MCCI. The leadership team and the implementation team of this process are trying to come up with an easier way to talk about it, because that really doesn't say what it is. It's a process that we're walking through and we're going to roll it out to the church. There are things that you need to do and things that we need to do. So I came up with road, less traveled as my name for it. Reaching, R for reaching, O for out, A for as, and D for disciples. So it's our road. It's reaching out as disciples. We're going to learn more in the next three weeks what this initiative is all about. And Brian, we don't have to keep that name. Brian Swenson is the head of our implementation of this whole process because it's not a program. It's a resource that we're getting from the conference that will help us to reach out to our greater community 
and help them know what we are all about and how they can be a part of us. We'll do more next week. As we continue in worship, I invite you to stand if you are able. Our next song this morning is number 254, We Three Kings.
thing. I don't know what's going on. We've got some static going on here. I don't know. I can grab a handheld in just a second if it keeps going. The announcements are in your bulletin. Where's Victoria? She's got a bunch for us. Come on up to the microphone. I just want to let you know that um, we still have some openings to sign up for coffee hour for this month. I did sign up team three for next week, and I am looking for five people to donate some sort of food good for the coffee hour. Anytime there's a team signed up, we are always looking for five people to donate either a snack or fruit or whatever they want to donate. Um, anyone who took home a church that was going to be decorated that hasn't brought it back, and even if you haven't had a chance to decorate it, if you could bring those back so we can make sure that they get decorated and put away for, at the end of the season, that would be helpful. And um, just a reminder that our game night is on Friday the 13th. Um, from 6 to 8, and then Sunday is our potluck using our new cookbook. So if you can bring something out of the new cookbook to the potluck, we'll have that after second service um, next Sunday. Thank you. We'll figure out the tech bugs later. I'll just use a handheld for now. The rest of the announcements are in your bulletin. Youth group does meet next Sunday as well, right? Yeah. You Go ahead. So we are going to go to Maine um, next Sunday, junior, middle, and high school. Um, we'll meet here at the church at 1.30, and then the uh, two main villages in Keewak, so it takes about a half hour to get there. So we'll come from 2 to 4, and then we'll meet home at 4.30. The cost is going to be $10 per person. Um, it's actually 25 but church is going to help offset some okay. of that. Okay. So if the kids want to go tubing next Sunday, be here at 1.30. Yeah, we have to sign up before. And we have to sign up ahead of time. That's the only catch is you have to pre-register. So if you're watching and you know someone who wants to go, make sure that they get that information. They have to sign up. They can um, also call the church office this week. We'll help them get signed up if they need help. And don't let the cost be a hindrance. If anyone wants to go but can't afford because they have more than one child, please just let me know um, confidentially and we'll take care of it. Or, Be or Brittany, yes. We will find the money to send the children and the youth to go <laughs> tubing. It'll be fun. And friends are, friends are invited too, right? Okay, friends can come as well. Also, there is an announcement um, about Summerfield Ministry. You can contact Carla Kermoris to, hang, to sign up to help with that. Our next meal is Saturday, January 21st. Oh, and, oh, and Family Promise is coming up too. When is that week? Come see Kate if you want to help with Family Promise. That starts on the 16th. All the main meals are covered. It's sides and extras and desserts that she needs help with. Are there any other announcements? All right. How about ways that God has been at work in your life over the holidays? Do we have any God sightings or joys or even prayer concerns to share? I've got the one. I do have one from Victoria. It is a classmate of hers grandbaby, Billy, who is having open heart surgery. And Billy is not very old, is she? She's a year old, so prayers for Billy. Um, we'll go back to Brianna. Prayers for Brianna's grandfather, who has, is looking at end stages of life with heart disease. Prayers for him. Katie.
Katie's uncle is also in hospice, so prayers for her aunt and uncle and family. I'll come back. Donna Berg, prayers for the family of Donna Berg who passed away, big in our music community, Chris. Prayers for the sister of Kevin Lombard, Amber. We will prayers for her. Yes. Okay, and her name? Katie. Prayers for Katie, who lost one of the twins that she is pregnant with. But prayers for the other surviving twin, and prayers for Katie. Anything else? Our list of prayers is in the bulletin as well. Blanche and Judy and Sharon. I know, Sharon, you're watching. Um, prayers for you. For the family of Don Olsom, Steve's dad, who passed away. Continued prayers for Tom and Doris and Michael Turner as he continues to recuperate. Prayers for John and Sarah and Rosie and Michelle. Are there any others? I also do want to let you know that the children got Star Words, but you also have Star Words as well. We'll have two baskets. There are no, um, all the words have been redone for this year. I know last year we had some words, uh, foreign language words that were a little difficult, but we, um, I took all those out this year. So uh, all the words have been redone, and that's your word for the year. And if you're worshiping with us online and you would like a star word sent to you, please put a comment in and we'll get that out for you as well. And the thing with star words is that you see how God works through that word in your life throughout the year. And then you bring those stories back to us so that we can share them together. Let us pray. God of wonder and mystery, God of the stars and the universe, God of winding ways, and straight paths, we gather today with gratitude for the gift of your constant presence. You dare to love us despite sometimes our inability or unwillingness to respond fully. You dare to care for us despite our challenges in caring for others. And you dare to walk with us on our own journeys toward the stars and the guiding points that you put before us. And you continue to lead us forward, guiding us by the teachings of Jesus to seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly in your loving shadow. We pray for all those who are lonely and who are sick, who are grieving loved ones, those who are without shelter this season. We offer all of our prayers and our hopes to you in confidence and in the gratitude of your love and presence. And we continue in our 738 prayer this morning. God, we lift this up to you in prayer. Please do what we cannot do ourselves. We need you to break through into our lives, our congregation, and our community. Use us together for unimagined new purposes on behalf of Christ. Break through any barriers that stand in your way and hold us back. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Magi came before Jesus with their gifts, and we come this morning with our gifts as well. Would the ushers please come forward?
sent by Herod, we too come as searchers for glimpses of your presence. As were the people in those days, we are surprised that we find you not in a palace, but in a stable, surrounded by a family of poor refugees and worshipped by the lowly shepherds. Like them, our gifts from our wealth seem simultaneously too material and woefully shabby and outshined by what you have given us. Just the same, use our gifts for the work of justice, mercy, and compassion, as would we fit the Savior who sleeps in the manger. It is in his holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Can you remember the first time that you ever saw a shooting star or the first time you saw the Milky Way? There is something shockingly holy about it. One minute it's a normal night and the next minute the sky is taking your breath away. There is that same sense of awe when we come to the table. For one minute we are moving through our day-to-day -day lives and the next we're being told that this table has room for everything. And at this table all can be fed. Where else in the world do we hear those messages? So today, you are invited, as you always are, to be fed at the table. And you are not invited because what you have done or not done. You cannot be uninvited because of anything that has happened in your life. And you cannot be invited because you are a good Christian or a good person. You are invited simply because you belong to God. So come to the table today with your questions, your doubts, and your fears. Come with your hope and your awe and your love for the world. For God is undoubtedly, undoubtedly at this table. And God is inviting you. And we come and we hear the, the ancient words that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he sat at a table. He sat with his disciples and after the supper was over, he took the bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks and he gave it to them and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And after the supper was over, he took the cup. He blessed it, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them. And he said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is the new covenant sealed by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. For you and for many, every time you drink it, remember me. Let us pray. And so, God of starlight, there has always been something about the stars for us. We wish on them, we look for them. The Magi must have known that there was something holy about the stars. So today we come to you in prayer, trusting that if you can paint the stars in the sky, then surely you can hear us over the noise. So pour out a double portion of your spirit on this bread and cup and on our star words, so that these ordinary objects might give us a glimpse of something more. For like the Magi, we are seeking you, and like the Magi, we are looking up, and like the Magi, we just need a sign. Guide our feet, show up in the mundane and in the extraordinary. Be in the stars in the sky and in our everyday lives, because we are hopeful, O oh God. We are hopeful. And so with the confidence of children wishing on stars, we pray the prayer that you taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God. For the people of God. And today we will receive the elements in our pews. You know, it's a new year. I thought I'd try something new. I've never done it this way, so y'all are going to have to help me. So as you receive the bread, as you pass the plate, you take a piece of bread, you may take the bread immediately. And when you receive the cup, please hold the cup, and we will receive that element together at the end. This is one and two and five. It is God rest you, merry gentlemen. I forgot about the transition. we got to get... <laughs> Linda, a minute here.
So go forth and follow the star. And when you have found the child, tell the world the good news. And know that you always go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said...